Come, come, come. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Kuma Lach Yahweh Shai, Ashar Pesat, to WFI Seattle, Ashar Pesat, man, to our dear brothers of SOI Resurrected, man, this is the first annual Passover that we are hosting here together as a family, as a unit, to serve Yahweh, by Shema Yahweh Shai, right, for Passover, man, let's just be in the spirit, and let's just let the spirit flow, man. And let's just enjoy, you know what I'm saying, the fact that we have the opportunity to actually be able to rehearse the righteous acts, man. Like, right, go ahead and um, bring this out, okay? Uh, Psalm 77, 5. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 5. Read out. I have considered the days of old. What the Lord say? I have considered the days of old. Go ahead. The years of ancient times. Right, so we got to consider the days of old. Right, there's a reason why that we are all gathered together right now. Right? This is not something that we just came up with. Right? This is not something that the so-called white man has came up with, man, or our enemies or anything of that nature. No, this is actually dealing with our tradition, our history. Right? How do we know this? Because we are considering the days of old. We're considering the days of Daniel. We're considering the days of Moses. We're considering the days of Joshua, Caleb, right? Our mighty forefathers, man. Right? We're not considering the days, you know what I'm saying, of little Nas X. Go ahead. <coughs> The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 3. Read out. For even Christ pleased not himself. Even what? For even, even Christ, Christ pleased not, not himself. So that's the spirit that we want to actually come into in this Passover, right, here in Seattle. It says that even Christ pleased not himself. Right? We got to put our own pleasures away. Right? This is the time for us to really self-examine ourselves, humble ourselves down, you know what I mean, and actually start loving one another on our all-time high. Right? Being better than where you were last year. Right? We're approaching the new year, man. Right? The new year is here, man. Right? It's, it's another time for us to be able to get, get better, man. Lord willing, we're going to see this Babylon the Great come to an end. Right? you seeing all types of wars and things like that that are coming up. Right? What was just going on? Uh, you want to that just happened? Iran. Right. Iran, man. Right? Brothers is paying attention to this thing. That's right. This is why that we want to gather ourselves together on these holy feast days, man. Because this could be the last time that we can gather ourselves together, man. Right. Until we actually see each other in the kingdom, Lord willing. Right? Go ahead. Romans 15, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For even Christ pleased not himself. Uh -huh. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee mm -hmm. fail on me. Right. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. What the Lord say? For whatever things were written aforetime. For whatsoever things that were written aforetime. Again, the Bible is always telling us that we have to go back to what was written before the times that we were living, man. Right? We had we grew up with grandmas and grandpas and sit there and say, I'll sit on my lap, little shouty. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you what was going on right. back in 1954. Right. right? Then we kind of just be like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to hear what you're talking about, grandpa. You old as hell. Right? But the Lord, you know what I'm saying, says that's a beautiful thing. Right? We need to learn about what was written aforetime. Go ahead. Right. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. We're written for our what? We're, we're written, written for, for our learning. learning. No, we're just written for nothing. We're, we're written, written for our learning. learning. So everything that's dealing with the Bible is written for our learning. We hear this all the time. But when we're going through trials and tribulations, when we're going through uh, stress, when we're going through uh, things, you know what I'm saying, that may seem like we're not able to get ourselves out of, man. Right. Or, you know, saying we start to doubt the most high God. We have to refer back to the things that were written for our learning. Refer back to the uh, to the book of Job and look at the things that he's gone through. Ask yourself, am I able to go through the things that Job went through and still be able to actually worship him? man? Right. This is the type of spirit that we need to be in in this Passover, man. Thus said the Lord moving forward. Right. You got brothers right now, man, with fringes, man. You don't say eating damn pork, man, at the Passover. man. Right. Talk about on King David, man. right? Let's keep it real, right? Give me uh, the book of uh, John, chapter 14, verse 6. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Yeah. Yeah. Yahweh Shai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, uh, Joe Biden is the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, Christianity, Catholicism, man-made religion, and Babylon the Great is the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth. And the light. So yeah, how is shy, man, is the way and the truth and the light. That's something that we can't forget. Come. Whenever that we're going through things, man, we're going through afflictions, man. Whenever it seems like we can't get through our problems, understand that we, yeah, how is shy is the way, right? He's going to give you the truth, right? The true reason on how to get out of that situation, mm -hmm. right? So that you can actually get life again. Yeah. Thus said the Lord. 
That's right. right? These are things that we have to realize, man. Right? We cannot forget that. Go ahead and continue on that. No, uh, no what? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And we cannot forget that, man. Right? This, see, Old Testament, only Israelites have a problem with this. Mm -hmm. Right? This is why they avoid the New Testament, man. Right? They don't want to go through Christ. Right, but we have to understand that Christ is the one spirit, man, that actually exhorts, you know what I'm saying, what the Most High God is actually about. Uh, so in this Passover season, right, we have to understand that he is the way and the truth and the life. Uh, so we have to follow that, man. Right, give me the book of Matthew, King, if you don't mind. Bob the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. Read out. Read out. And behold, one came and said unto him, mm -hmm. good master, mm -hmm. what good thing shall I do that I make have eternal life. And that's the reason why that we're actually striving to keep these commandments at the best of our ability. This is the reason why they were rehearsing the, uh, the righteous acts. This is the reason why they were keeping Passover. This is the reason why that we keep the Feast of Dedication, man, and not damn Christmas. This is the, the reason why that we keep uh, Feast of Tabernacles, man, and not Thanksgiving. Right. right? Go ahead. Verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? And that's, again, it's about humbling ourselves, right? We can't call ourselves good. None of us is good up in this room. Right. None of us is really worthy to even partake of anything that we're doing right now. Right. Let's just keep it 100, man. I'll be the first to tell y'all right now I'm the biggest sinner in this room, right? That's right. If you're not able to even admit that about yourself, you know what I'm saying, then you're not in this thing. Right. You're, you're, you're really not, you don't have the right mindset, man, right? right? It's about humbling ourselves. Because when you learn to humble yourself, then when your brother or your sister is going through something, man, you're able to actually see what they're going through, you know what I'm saying, and pray for them and, and, and work them through that thing. Go ahead. That's right. Verse 17, <coughs> and he said unto him, uh -huh. why callest thou me good? Uh -huh. There is none good but one. But what? But there what? Is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is Yahweh. That is who? That, that is Yahweh. Go ahead. But if thou will enter into life. But if what? But if thou will enter into life. That's what we're trying to enter into is eternal life, man. Right? Uh, Baba Gashaka, somebody give me a water bottle back there if you don't mind. Baba Gashaka, there should be one on the counter. Uh, Baba Gashaka, go ahead. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. <laughs> it's just that simple, man. We have to keep the commandments, right? That's what this is about. We're commanded to keep the Passover, man. Whether people like it or not. You got a lot of Israelites that are saying, like, I don't know why y'all keeping Passover in these holy days. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Amos 5 and 21, mm -hmm. you know, he hates and despises your feast days. Not understanding the context of that scripture. Right? The context of that scripture is you had a lot of our Israelites, man, you know what I mean, that were profane in the temple. And doing things, you know what I'm saying, that were offered up to idols, you know what I'm saying, and not up to the Most High God. Right. So lucky, man. Go ahead to the next one. Is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 2. Right. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. No, speak, you know what I'm saying, to the uh, other nations. Speak <laughs> unto the children of Israel. Again, so everything when you're dealing with the Bible is always spoken to us. Go ahead. And say unto them, uh -huh. concerning the feast of the Lord. No, concerning, you know what I'm saying, the so-called white man's holidays. Concerning the feast of the Lord. And that's why we're all here today is because we are concerned about the feast of the Lord, man. Huh? Uh, uh, go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy. Right, and we're going to proclaim this day to be holy. It's a separate day. This day is not like no other day, man. Right, it's not an average Joe type day, man. Right, it's not, yo, yo, get up at damn 530 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Go clock in for the so-called white man type day, man. No, this is a separate day. Right? right, and everybody that's in here right now understands the importance of this day, man. And the most high sees that, Right. And everybody that's in this room right now, you know what I'm saying, I consider my family, man. Uh -huh. Everybody that I see in this room right now, you know what I'm saying, I know that I'm going to die for it, man. Uh -huh. If it comes down to it, man. Because y'all, everybody in this room believes in the same thing. And y'all about showing my shit, I'm like y'all shots. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Which ye shall pro proclaim to be holy convocations. Right. Even these are my feasts. Even these are my feasts. Go ahead. Verse 4. Uh -huh. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocations, right. which ye shall proclaim in their season. So there's a time and there's a place for everything, man. This is the season of Passover right now, right? This is not the season of them, you know what I'm saying, wicked-ass, pink, long-eared, you know what I'm saying, bunnies, man. You know what I'm saying, bouncing around and, you know what I'm saying, your grandma's backyard, you know what I'm saying, talking about they planting Easter eggs, man. Right? Go ahead. Right. 
verse 5, in the 14th day of the first <coughs> month at even mm -hmm. is the Lord's Passover. Right. And that's why we're keeping it. Right. right? Now, understand that Esau has changed the times and the laws. Dealing with Daniel 7 and 25. So, Esau says it's how many days in a, in a year? Who knows? 365, right? What does the Lord say how many days is in a year? 360. 360. When has Esau changed the times and the laws? Man, all the way back to the damn Greek days, man. Right? Even before that. Really chiefly dealing with the Greek day. Right? So think about that. He's added five days every single year. Right? This is another reason why it makes no sense for us to be celebrating birthdays. Because you're not celebrating your birthday. It ain't the day you were born. Right? The first day that I was born, the, the moment that I turned one, there was five days added extra to it. I was already a, a year old. You know what I'm saying? So when you think about that, you also got to consider that when you're dealing with actual days. So this is why the Bible says that we have to rehearse the righteous acts, which we're going to get into. Right? This is why we actually have to, sometimes we have to look at the seasons. We know that, you know what I'm saying, that the new year is when it's springtime, man. We know that that is the time that we have to observe Passover, man. And we know when it's about to get summertime. Because the Most High blessed us as Israelites, thanks to our Israelite brothers, all praise the Most High, you know what I'm saying, to be able to read these signs. Right? Go ahead. Verse 6. And then the 15th day of the same month mm -hmm. is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So right at the Passover, guess what? We kicking off. Feast of Unleavened Bread, man. That's right. Right? We're going to go home. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go back out and do the work. Because this whole weekend is dedicated to the Most High God, man. Every day is dedicated to the Most High, man. Right? I'm excited, man, to do this work. Man. You know what I'm saying? This is a break for me as far as I'm concerned. This ain't work for me when you love it. That's right. right? And after camp, we're going to come back here and, and kick it off, you know what I'm saying, with Feast, uh, with feast of Unleavened Bread, man. Uh, right? Because when our people feast, man, it ain't no one-day thing. That's right? 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 So-called so white man says, oh, you know what I'm saying, get married, you know what I'm saying, you, you got a little honeymoon, you know what I'm saying, a little after party and a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. No, our people, man, when our people got married, no, no, we, we celebrated for seven straight seven days. Straight That's right. Down. You know what I'm saying? Talk about wake up, get up, ah, wake up, buddy, you know what I'm saying, wake up, you know what I'm saying? That's how our people get down, man. Go ahead. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And in the 15th day of the same month, is the feast of unleavened bread unto right. the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. So it, it's also understand, you want to make sure that the leaven is out of your house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like completely out of your household. Like whether that's, you know what I'm saying, bread, iron keys, bread, you know what I'm saying? Potato bread. I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if you went and spent a lot of money on potato bread, man. You got to get out your house. Right? But more importantly, right, it's also going into spiritual. Right? Because your body represents, you know what I'm saying, that bread, man. Right? And that leaven that we have to get out of our bodies in this time and season right now with Passover, man, is dealing with sin. Which is why none of us is worthy. Which is why we have to self-examine ourselves. Go ahead. Verse 7. In the first day, ye shall have an holy convocation. You shall what? You shall, shall have, have a holy convocation. Right, and that's why we're gathered here right now. Yes. Right? A holy convocation. Go ahead. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And that's another reason why that we kind of do the Passover at nighttime, man. Right? There's a lot of work going on during the daytime. Mm -hmm. Right? And we know when that Sabbath actually approaches, that it's at sundown, there's no work. It makes sense, you know, that the Most High set it up, that we observe the Passover, man, at, at, dark, at dark time. Oh right? You got Israelites who be like, oh, God, 1030, gosh. I'm, I'm usually asleep by now. Right? right? Most High's not dealing with that, man. Right? right? No, we ain't excited to be up this late. Man. Right. Right. Go ahead. Verse 8, but mm -hmm. ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. You shall do what? Ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Right, and this is the exact reason why that, you know what I'm saying, we have this land prepared, man. That's what our ancient forefathers did, right? By cooking that lamb, you know what I'm saying, over the fire. All right, give me the book of Matthew chapter 26, sorry, verse 17. Let's speak through something. Matthew 26, verse 17. Yeah. Now the first day. Of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Of the Feast of what? Of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All right, we're reading about Christ, man. 
right? Uh, Christ keeps the feast. You got people that say that, oh, I'm a Christian, which means, oh, I, I follow Christ. But they don't even keep the feast day. Right? Go ahead. Now the, <coughs> now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahweh Shai, saying unto him, mm -hmm. where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Mm. To do what? To eat the Passover. So it sounds like Christ kept the Passover. Right. For those who say that we shouldn't keep the Passover. No, we keep the Passover. We do the things that Christ did. That's right. That's right. We didn't give a damn about what other people say, man. Right? Because right? this is how I look at it, man. And let me see how y'all think about it. Would you rather live your life, right, knowing that we're the people in this book and we have laws, statutes, and commandments that we have to keep that requires us to get eternal life? Would you rather just listen to everybody in this world? No! Right, then, then to find out, and then you don't know say, then to find out, you don't know say, you're destroyed. Or would you rather believe? And the only thing that we have, as far as dealing with our history, right? And then it's all said and done, you know what I'm saying? And let's just say this wasn't true anyway. God. What do you think is going to be the bigger consequence? Us believing in our history, and then we come to find out it ain't true. Or us just denying our only piece of history, you know what I'm saying, to find out that it is true. <laughs> and those are things that we got to think about, man. And when you think about that, man, you know what I'm saying, that it gives us more of a motivation to humble ourselves during this Passover season, which is a beautiful thing. Right? Is that anyone that came? No, verse 18. Go ahead. And he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, mm -hmm. the master saith." My time is at hand. My time is what? My time is at hand. Go ahead. I will keep the Passover. I will do what? I will, I will keep, keep the Passover. I will not keep the Passover. I will keep the Passover. And you can hear the passion in every single brother and sister's voice up in here, man. Right? We keeping the Passover. This is one of the most important holy days, man. Right. These are things we got to realize, man. We're going to keep the Passover. That's right. That's right. We're not going to do it like the, you know, the nasty so-called, you know what I'm saying, white man. On Easter Sunday, man. Right? I remember coming up in the damn, you know, the last the last so-called black church I, I worked for, you know what I'm saying, as a musician. I remember they hired this fake Jew, man. Let me let me watch my language. Amalek. <laughs> I remember they hired Amalek, you know what I'm saying? To come up there and teach all so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans what a Passover meal was like. And I never read the Bible. He got a big bone up there, a, a big ass egg, hard boiled egg, right? No bitter herbs, right? No, no, no unleavened bread. Just all out madness, man. Huh? And our people just sitting up there believing it. Our people looking at that plate, the only thing they seen was this. <laughs> and everybody walked out that damn church drunk, man, huh? right? Including some of my family members, right? Not taking it seriously, man. Right. right? Because we don't know who we are. We've been destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right, right? that's right. And this is why it's beautiful that we all understand who we truly are. We're actually able to operate, man, in our heritage. That's, that's right. right. <coughs> go ahead, <coughs> slap it. Verse 18. Uh -huh. And he said, Go into the city mm -hmm. to such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover mm -hmm. at thy house. With my disciples. Right, and that's what we're doing, right? It ain't about getting a big-ass venue all the time, you know what I'm saying, where everybody can do the cha-cha slide, man, or the electric slide, man. Right, we kind of gathered together in the house, right? right? Yeah. Kind of, you know what I'm saying, only got maybe this much arm length, you know what I'm saying, besides the oh, see that? See, just the most odd seating, see that? That's how much arm length that we have, man, right? But guess what, man, it's a beautiful thing. This is what our forefathers did. You think they had a huge ass venue? No, we was in captivity, man. Right, nah. We gotta do the best we gotta do. You got brothers be like, oh, I'm not gonna do Passover, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been seeing the other camps do it, man. They be, they be doing it big. I ain't got all that. Yeah. Well, brother, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta do what the other camps did, man. Uh -huh. Right? Observe the Passover anyway. That's right. Because that's what Christ did. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> the disciples said, uh, Verse 19, and the disciples did as Yahweh had appointed them, mm -hmm. and they made ready to Passover. Mm. 
Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. <coughs> he did what? He, he sat, sat down, down with the twelve. twelve. Right, that's that's proof right there. This is why we keep the Passover at even when the sun goes down. Right? Christianity does it when the sun's up. Yeah. Yeah. Can't make this stuff up, man. Nah. Right? Everything is backwards when you're dealing with Christianity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <coughs> Judges, uh, uh, verse 21, Matthew 26, 21. Uh -huh. And as they did eat, he said, As verily, they what? As, as they, they did eat, eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Right. As they did eat. So understand, this is, we got to do exactly what Christ did. Eat of this Passover, right? You have vegetarian Israelites, man, who have an is who have an issue, right, with Passover, to the point that they'll they'll become Old Testament only Israelites, or New Testament only Israelites. Matter of fact, to be honest, <coughs> which is off. Excuse me. Give me the book of Judges five and eleven. Judges chapter five verse eleven. For you. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Where are we? What are we looking to be delivered from? They are, that are delivered from the noise of archers. Why are we looking to be delivered from the place where there's going to be noises of archers, missiles right. that it's coming down? This is what this is talking about here in America. Go ahead. Right. In the places of drawing water. <laughs> uh huh. Because when it's dealing with waters, right? You're dealing with nations of people, like spoken about in Revelation 15 and 17. And when you're dealing with America, you have all types of nations of people that live here. Right? This is the melting pot of different nationalities of people. Right? Go ahead. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. There shall the Israelites what? There rehearse they rehearse the righteous acts, acts of the Lord. Lord. This is what we're doing. Right? The Most High has a time and a place where he's actually going to put that spirit in every single one of us, man. Of who he has called and chose. Right? But we still have to humble ourselves now because he can literally take us up out of this thing just like that. Go ahead. Right. Is that it, Ryan? Not more. Um, Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Right. And so we rehearse the righteous acts, y'all. That's right. Don't let nobody tell you, you know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Um, he got to keep the law. Oh, he ain't got on the right clothes. God. I don't like what she got on. God. Oh, she got that on? Oh, she tripping. Oh, look, he got a brown spot on the, on the, on the corner of his shirt. He don't care about Christ. No, nah, man, that's not what this is about. It's about humbling ourselves down. Right. As far as I'm concerned, we should all be coming up in here with damn potato sacks and ashes on our damn heads. Ah! Right? Yeah. In that spirit of Mordecai, man. Right. Right? Let's keep it 100. Right. And Esther. Like, right. Exactly, brother. Exactly. You can go ahead and go to the next one, bro. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 7. Bring it out. Yeah! Remember the days of old. What are we going to do? Remember the days of old. Remember the Passover, y'all. Remember what our forefathers did. We're going to go back and, and actually remember what our forefathers did. Right? And the significance of this, man. Right? Go ahead. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Consider the years of many generations. Right? Not just 100 years from now. Right? Thousands and thousands of years, you know what I'm saying, from, uh, before then. We gotta consider that, man. Cause if you don't consider that, then you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be plugged in with the loop, man. You're not gonna understand what's going on. Right. You're not gonna understand that everything that you're seeing right now has already happened, and nothing is new under the sun. Go ahead. Continuing on, ask thy father, and he will show thee. No, ask you know what I'm saying, Joel Osteen. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Ask Joyce Fred Meyer. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Now we gonna ask our father. He's going to show us. That's why we're not going to be blinded by anybody that comes up to us when we at camp and be like, well, y'all know what you're talking about. Mexicans ain't the Israelites. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Oh, they're just, you know what I'm saying, byproducts, you know what I'm saying, the so-called white man. Right? No, man, we read the spirit, man. That's right. Right? We read the spirit. There's people that's dark as damn flavor flavor, man. It's a damn Edomite. Right. Ah. 
And there's people as white as Taylor Swift as a damn Israelite. Right. New York Knicks. Right. <laughs> what was that, brother? Actually, no, I found out. Uh, I did more research because I posted that. I feel bad. I did more research. His dad is. Uh, so his dad, no, his his grandpa is, is Esau. Oh. Yeah, he's out of there. Yeah, he's out of there. Unfortunately. On his mom's side or his dad's no, side? No, his dad's side. Oh. His dad's side. I forgot his name. The uh, Hooper. The Hooper. My name is Long story short. Go, go ahead, King. Go ahead. Go ahead, King. At thy father, and he will show thee. Uh huh. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Right? I be asking that brother Ashar. Man, what was going down, you know what I'm saying, in the hilltop back in the day? You know what I'm saying? And he will tell thee. You know what I'm saying? I asked, I asked brother, you know what I'm saying? I asked brother Josh, man, you know what I'm saying? What, what was going on down here in Seattle, bro? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what was going on. And he tells me, if you're not going to ask the most high, he's not going to tell you. Right. If you're not going to ask Yahweh Shai, your elder, he ain't going to tell you. God. If you're not going to ask wise men, then you're not going to get the answer. Right. right. You can be reading the precept and may not understand it, but somebody that is literally in your contact list on your phone that you can call that believes in the same thing that you believe in, you can call, you can get that answer. Wow. But how bad do you want this wisdom? That's really what it comes down to. How bad do you want to humble yourself down, you know what I'm saying, and really obtain that wisdom? Because you can't obtain wisdom unless you're meek. Right? right? Go ahead. Uh, verse 8. When the Most High divided the nation. When the Most High what? When the, the Most High divided the nations. Mm -hmm. Their inheritance. Their what? Their, their inheritance. inheritance. Right. So and in, there's an inheritance. You know what I'm saying? Shalom, you guys. There's an inheritance. You got a chair for her? You got a chair for her? Okay, all praises. There's an inheritance, right, that is for the nation of Israel. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Right? Right? And it's a is the divided. It's a divided inheritance, right? What did Esau inherit? You know, saying the damn rocks. You know, saying you know that that Flintstone life. You know, paddling on the feet. You know, what I'm saying to get that car moving, right? That's what he inherited. Right? What the Moabites inherit? Rice. You know, what I'm saying rats, bats, right? Frogs. Right. Chang yang chang gong gong. Right. Right. What the Japanese inherit? Right? Samurai swords. Sushi. Right? Sushi. S sumo wrestling. Right? Tuna. Right, tuna. Right. What about the Arabs? What did they inherit? Oil. Right? 7 Eleven. <laughs> right. Oil. Right. 7 Eleven. Right. right. Corner stores. You know what I'm saying? Small time damn uh, car, car lots. The desert. Right? <laughs> the desert. Right? But what is Israel inherited? The hey, entire world, man. That's right. right. And that's what you got to think about, man. Right? And don't forget that. Remember, the world is actually made for our sakes. <laughs> this is why we got to keep Passover, man. That's it, the Lord. Right? Go ahead, Ken. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, uh -huh. when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people. According to the number of the children of Israel. No, the children of Edomites. The children of Israel. All right, it's about us in this room, y'all. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That, that's what it's about. And that's what we got to realize. Right? Thus said the Lord. Right? You can go ahead to the next one, King. Now, let's get into this, man. We're almost done. Let's get into this. The book of Exodus. We're going to start getting people involved. So, y'all ready to read? Okay. Huh? Come on, I'm going to point, point people out. Everybody paying attention? Get your sword. Get your sword, man. Right? Come on. All right, go ahead, King. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 1. Read out. Then afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel. No, thus said, you know what I'm saying, Jesus Christ. Thus said the Lord God of Israel. Thus said, why Jesus? Thus said the Lord God of Israel. Go ahead. Let my people go. No, let all people go. Let my people go. See, see, that's the problem with a lot of, you know what I'm saying, man-made religion. They they gloss over, you know what I'm saying, words that are actually plural and words that, you know what I'm saying, are singular. That's a singular term. Let my. Right? 
Something that is belongs to me don't belong to everybody else. Right. right? And God is saying, let my people go. There's a certain people that belong to me that don't belong to everybody else. Right. And he's speaking about the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes. Right? We've been enslaved all the way from the Egyptian days, right? That's right. Right? We've gone through seven major captivities, and guess what? We're at our, our last captivity. That's right. Yeah. Thus said the Lord, the dollar bill lets you know that. That's right. Right? So the Lord said, let my people go. Right? That's something that we're actually commemorating. The fact that the Most High actually used Moses. Right? Aaron. Right? Miriam. Right? Many different leaders. Right? To actually allow us to actually leave slavery out of the hands of Pharaoh. That's right. Uh, we are at verse 2. Okay. I keep on, okay? Let my people go, that <coughs> they may hold a feast unto me. That they may what? That they, they may hold a feast unto me. me. <laughs> If y'all can't see how like how the most high is, man, this is why we gotta like really like get out of our emotions. All right. If when the most high can be petty when he wants to, and we can't say nothing about it. Right. Uh, the most high literally had to go into slavery just so he can actually get us out of slavery, just so we can have a feast on him. So right. how petty does that sound? Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. That's it. But because the most high, that's what he is. That's what he does. Who am I to, to question that? Yeah. Right? God right? The Most High loves it when we actually worship him, man. When we are having a feast unto the Lord, this is a form of, a form of worship, man. That's right. Right? Not some also so-called white lady in the damn, you know, Sam Hughes. Joyful, joyful, we adore. The Most High is not dealing with that. Right. Right? right. right. He's dealing with true worship, man. Feast days, man. Right? Fasting. Prayer. Supplication. Studying, gathering amongst your brothers and sisters, man. Wow. Right? That's true worship, man. Right? Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, let my people go mm -hmm. that they may hold that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Right. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Who right? Who was the Lord that I shall obey his voice to let Israel go? Pharaoh, right? You, we have modern day pharaohs right now, right? We've always had a pharaoh. That's just a, a, a level of position and rulership, right? And these modern day leaders right now have that same type of attitude that pharaoh had then. Who the hell is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? That's what they're saying. What are these so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans out there on the streets screaming for with that damn carpet on the bottom of these shirts? You know what I'm saying? Talk about the so called white man, woman, and child is a goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. Who the hell they think they are? Right? Who was they got? Right? That's what Pharaoh was saying. Right? They don't give a damn about us, man, and, and who we serve. Right? This is why Christ says that, you know what I'm saying, we know who we worship. Right? For salvation is of the Jews. That's right. right. Thus said the Lord. Go ahead. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Neither will I let Israel go. The rest of these nations do not know Yahweh Bashem Yahweh they're never going to let us go out of captivity. This is why Yahweh Shai is going to have to be the one to come deliver us. That's right. Right? Just like the Most High used Moses, you know what I'm saying, to get us up out of Egypt, man. Which is why we're commemorating this. But we're also commemorating, you know what I'm saying, the fact that Yahweh Shai had died on that cross, you know what I'm saying, so that we can be adopted back to him as Israelites. That's right. That's right. Right? So that he can come back and save us, man, out of captivity, out of damn Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. Because that is what is written in prophecy, man. Right. Now, we're going to go ahead and get into the heart of this thing. I'm going to start calling out some reads. We'll start with you want to thumb first. Uh, uh, start at uh, Exodus chapter 7. This is the book of Exodus chapter 7 from the top. Read out. Read out. And the Lord <laughs> said unto Moses, uh -huh. See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Uh -huh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Right. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee. And Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Right, go ahead. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my sign and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt. That I may what? That I may lay my hand upon Egypt. And that's something that we pray, man, is that the Most High is going to come back, man, sing Yahweh Shai, so Yahweh Shai come and lay his hand, you know what I'm saying, upon this modern-day Egypt, right? right? 
And when we say laying his hand, you know what I'm saying, we ain't talking nicely. You know what I'm saying? Right, we're talking about that death angel, man. Real talk, man. Right, go ahead. And bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them. So did they. Uh -huh. And Moses was fourscore years old. That's 40 years old. Go ahead. And Aaron fourscore and three years old. 43 years old. Go ahead. When they spake unto Pharaoh. Right. See, our people had that LeBron James type genes, man. You know what I'm saying? Most high, usually in 40, man, to go out there, you know what I'm saying, your prime and really put in this work for the most high. Right, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh. Right, so the Most High is telling Aaron to take this rod, you know what I'm saying, and cast it, you know what I'm saying, right in front of Pharaoh. Right, go ahead. And it shall become a serpent. So imagine this staff, you know what I'm saying? You throw it down to the ground and it becomes a snake, right? Now, it doesn't get descriptive what type of snake it was. It could have been a damn anaconda, man, right, right. right? It could have been a cobra. It could have been anything, man. Go ahead. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. So now they cast that down. They showed that miracle, you know what I'm saying, in front of them. Go ahead. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Go ahead. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So understand that, you know what I'm saying, our enemies, man, they got their magicians. They got their sorcerers, right? They got their witches and warlocks, man, right, who actually do witchcraft, right? Go ahead. Now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. So now you have the magicians that took their staffs, put it to the ground, and they became snakes, and these staffs became snakes as well, right? But this is wickedness on the left-hand side, right. whereas what Aaron did, right, is just a miracle that's on the right-hand side from the most high God, right? Let's see who's going to win out of these snakes, you know what I'm saying, from the right or the left-hand side. Go ahead. For they cast down every man is rough, and they became serpents. Uh-huh. But Aaron's rod. No, but the Egyptians rod. But Aaron's rod. Go ahead. Swallowed up their rod. So you got one snake that swallowed up all these snakes, man. Right? That's significant to let you know that, hey, we don't die, we multiply as Israelites. Yeah. When the Lord is on our side, he is on our side, man. Right? And we've seen plenty of examples of that, which is why we're commanding Reagan Passover right now. Go ahead. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them. As the Lord has said. You think that, you know what I'm saying, Joe Biden and all these wicked ass officials don't know that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans worldwide are actually keeping the Passover? Like the Lord has instructed us to? They're not going to let us go, man. Right? This is why we have to gather ourselves together. Oh, nation that's not desired. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. Uh -huh. He refuses to let the people go. Right, he refuses to let the people go. Right? America refused to let us go. They keep us trapped, you know what I'm saying, with their philosophies. Right? They keep us trapped, you know what I'm saying, with their entertainment. Whether it's through the music. Whether it's through sports. To keep us blinded from what's really going on when World War III is on the rise. Right? right? These are things that we have to realize, man. Right. right? We're not teaching our kids. Right? Go ahead. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he came. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand. Uh -huh. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go. What's the phrase for tonight? Let my people go. Go ahead. That they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hither to thou 
What is that here? And understand, we're going to go through a second wilderness, y'all, if we, if we make it Lord willing. Right, right. This is what, you know what I'm saying, these churches is not talking about. This is what uh, Christianity, Catholicism, Jehovah Witnesses, all these man-made religions is not talking about. They're telling you, you know what I'm saying, that you can just live how the hell you want to live, you know what I'm saying, and that you're going to go fly in the sky somewhere with the damn, you know what I'm saying, white baby and pampers, you know what I'm saying, and wings. No, that's not that's not biblical, man. Right? We looking, you know what I'm saying, Lord willing, we're, we're striving to make that number. Striving to be in one third, man. Right? Striving to be 144,000 chosen elect. But even if we happen to make that, man, we got to go through that second wilderness. Good. We got to go through that second wilderness. Right? And it's probably going to be worse than what it was the first time. Uh, right? And this is what those bitter herbs represent. Right? Us being in that wilderness, man. That's a bitter way of living. Right? Go ahead. Thou saith the Lord in this. Thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt know that I am the Lord. All right. And we know that the Most High, his name is Yahweh, man. Come. Ain't nobody telling us nothing different, man. That's Real talk. Saying. Go ahead. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand mm -hmm. upon the waters which are in the river, mm -hmm. and they shall be turned to blood. They shall be what? They shall be turned to blood. So the Lord is telling, you know what I'm saying, literally Moses, you know what I'm saying, what's going to happen to Pharaoh, you know what I'm saying, because he's hardening his heart. The same way the Lord is going to harden the heart of these leaders, you know what I'm saying, of today. He's already doing it right now. That's why World War Three is on the rise right now. Right? Missiles are being bombed, are being are being shot out everywhere, man. Right, go ahead. And the fish that is in the river shall die. Mm. And the river shall stink. Shall what? Shall stink. Right. Of course it's gonna stink, man. Blood, dead fish, right? We know what dead fish smell like. Right? <laughs> right? Especially as brothers. Fish sauce. Huh? Mm, fish sauce. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's strong J. That's strong J. You know what I'm saying? Brother don't know about that strong J. You know what I'm saying? Right, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And the Egyptians shall know to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, said unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand mm -hmm. upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers. And upon their ponds, mm. and upon all their pools of water, mm -hmm. that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, mm. both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters. That were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died. And the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. So the, imagine not even being able to get your water supply because the entire water is just turned to blood. Imagine not being able to uh, to fish, you know what I'm saying, and actually being able to eat. Because now all the fish are just floating at the top of this bloody-ass water, man. You know what I'm saying? Smelling like them. You know what I'm saying? Strong J. Go ahead. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them. As the Lord has said. So everybody walking around with blood looking like damn Carrie, man, off that scary movie, man. And still, Pharaohs don't want to let us go. Mm -hmm. That's how much the, uh, the Most High hardened the heart of uh, Pharaoh. That's how much the Most High has been hardening the hearts, you know what I'm saying, of these leaders of today. That's why we have to really prepare ourselves for Jacob's trouble, man. Go ahead. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Mm -hmm. Neither did he set his heart to this also. Mm -hmm. And all the Egyptians did round about the river for water to drink. And they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled. After that, the Lord has smitten the river. All praise the most high. Come on, come on. Come on, the water can give you a break. Brother just read a whole chapter. We're going all the way through 12. Right? <laughs> 
I'm gonna have you read chapter uh, chapter twelve, King, to end it out, because we ended on chapter twelve. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have you read. You can come right up here, King. Okay. It's the water, King. All praise to the Most High, man. Call all y'all about about shimmy up shy, man. Mighty reading, King. Mighty reading. We're gonna pick up the Exodus chapter eight. I'm gonna have you read the entire chapter as fast as you possibly can. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 1. Read out. Yahweh. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, and they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. Damn, man, we just got done with bloody water and fish, you know what I'm saying, dead. Now you got to hit us with frogs, man. Yeah. Right, go ahead. And the river shall be forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thy house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people. Right, upon thy bed, right? That's the official saying, there's a frog in my throat. Go ahead. And into thine ovens, and into thine kneading throats. And the frogs shall come up, both on thee and upon thy people, wow. and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch, th stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did, did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the lands of Egypt. Look how dumb, you know what I'm saying, our enemies are. Here you got the most high, you know what I'm saying, that's sending another plague, right? Aaron stretched out his, 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 his hand and frogs is all over the place. Then the heathens is like, oh, I can do it too. And then they stretch out their hand and now you got double frogs, right? Makes absolutely no sense, right? Go ahead. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. See, they only want us to actually go and talk because they know that we serve the true and living God. Right. So when shit hits the fan, excuse my language, when stuff hits the fan dealing with them, then all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, as far as on behalf of us, then all of a sudden they want to come to us, they want to be our friend, right. right? They want us to go in and treat to the Lord on behalf of them, Right? We're not entreating the Lord on behalf of our enemies. Right. If we go to the Lord on behalf of our enemies, it's to tell them that we want them destroyed. That's right. It's to tell them to speed this thing up. Right. It's to tell them that I don't want to see another year. I don't want to see another Passover. Right. right? Speed this thing up. Go ahead, King. And I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee? And for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only. And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it accordingly to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee and thy houses and from thy servants and from thy people and shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did accordingly to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. Has anybody smelled a dead frog before? Chemistry class. Chemistry class. There we go. Right. Right. Right, they got to keep them in actual refrigerators and stuff like that before they actually even display it out there in chemistry class, and it still stinks. Imagine if it's not even in a, in a refrigerator, man, right? All wrapped up, you know what I'm saying? That smell is something terrible. Go ahead. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with, the, with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lice in man mm -hmm. and in beast 
all the dust of the land became that's not okay. All the land of Egypt. Wait. You're good, King. All the dust of the land became lice. Throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. <laughs> oh, say that one more time, man. And, and the, magicians, the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. Could y'all imagine all these plagues that's coming up, and but the magicians just keep doubling it up, man? Right. right? They listen to too much R. Kelly. Double up, man. Huh? Right? It's madness, man. Right? It says that all the dust became lice. Imagine every single dust particle in the world. And they all turn to lice. They flying around. They in your hair. Right? They in your ear. They up your nose. All types of stuff. But then you got the magicians, you know what I'm saying, these wicked ass men that come over there and they double it. You see what I'm saying? This is how the, the, hey, the most high is ruthless, man, when it comes to his judgments. Right? Go ahead. But they could not. So there were lice upon men and upon beasts. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, There is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand there, stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and, upon, and into thy houses. And the, up, sorry, and the houses of Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground wherein they are. And I will, ser I will serve in, the de sorry, in that day the land of Goshen. Goshen, in which my people dwell. And no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end of thou mayest... Know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And, Lord, and the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by the reason of the swarm of flies. And I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure these are horse flies. Right, not one of them little, you know what I'm saying, the damn little tiny flies that like to fly in the square, you know what I'm saying, in the damn middle of your living room, man. Right, go ahead. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meat to, so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abominations of Egypt, Egyptians? Before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away and treat for me. Right. So, like, what kind of, what kind of, what is that? Right? We're in captivity. Right, you done seen your water turn to blood, right? You done got damn frogs all up in your land, mm -hmm. right? Now, now you got everybody with lice, right? Now you got flies all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Like them, uh, what's the them what the holy moly donut shop? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right? Keep the children fine. Exactly. <laughs> and then you want to be like, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of this. You know what I'm saying? But y'all can go, but don't go too far though. Mm -hmm. Right? That's madness. See, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, our enemies will allow us to learn our nationality, learn who we are, but they don't want us to go too far, right? But it's during those times are you going to, like, you know what I'm saying, endure, right? So coming into this Passover season, man, we got to go into the spirit of enduring. You got to endure harder. You're going to be tested, man, right? Oh, let me put some more channels in there. Go ahead, King. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee. And I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did accordingly to the, to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarm of flies. See that? Is that in uh, chapter 8? No, that's uh, come on. All right, Corey, again.
Yep. Yeah. And then we'll have uh, we'll have brother uh, mighty brother Joshua. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Read from the top. Go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna read that. I'm gonna read that uh, verse thirty one again. All right, go ahead. And Lord did accordingly to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarm of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart, and at this time neither would he let the people go. Neither would he what? Neither would he let the people go. Right, you see that? Still hard in his heart, man. That's madness. That's complete madness, man. But guess what? That's just the most high. This is his movie, and we're, we are just roles playing in this movie, right? And the most high, you know, he, he likes, you know what I'm saying? He, he likes entertainment. He likes suspense, right. Right. right? He likes suspense because he wants to show his power. And this is why he did all this to the Egyptians, to show his power that he is only the God of Israel and Israel only. God. <coughs> Khan? Khan. Khan. brother, uh, after he gets his lid up, it's the water, King. Get the water for the reading, King. Let's get Brother Joshua to read uh, chapter nine. We'll get um, we'll get um. You want to read chapter uh, chapter ten? I right, get you to read chapter ten. All right, John, you can read. All right, son, you, you can read chapter eleven, and then we'll have uh, you want to finish this off on chapter twelve. Yeah. Y'all got any more water? Con, yes. Could we get the brothers some water, please? Out the fridge, please. Anybody needs any water, there should be some in the fridge. <coughs> All praise of the most high, man. First official Passover, man. Right? This is a this is the day that the Lord has made. This is beautiful, man. Right? Lord willing, y'all being edified through the spirit. Lord willing the most high is pleased. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, most Lord willing, the Most High is pleased. Oh, praise the Most High. Getting that menorah lit up. Right? Huh. Huh. How y'all doing out there, man? Hope y'all hope y'all loving life right now, man. Because we not. He's trying to get out of this cafeteria. That's right. This is good. Come on. Come on. Uh. Oh, we gotta get right to it. As soon as we get lit up, we right back to it. Uh. All right, Shemai. All right, Shemai, Shemai, Shemai. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Shemai. All right, go ahead, King. Chapter 9. This is the book, Torah, Exodus, chapter 9, from the top. Yeah. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. No, of the white people. Of, of the, the Hebrews, Hebrews. Of the damn hobbits. Of the Hebrews. Go ahead. Let my people go, that they may serve me. Notice how that at every single chapter, man, it comes to us in our deliverance from Pharaoh. It starts off with, let my people go. Go ahead, King. That they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, mm. which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine, and the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that of the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, To morrow. The Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. See, the Lord stands on business, man. That's what the young folks be saying. God. Right? Most times not playing no games. When he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He's never slacking concerning his promises. Go ahead. And the Lord did that thing 
on the morrow. Right. That sound. That, don't that sound like a so-called black man? Right. The Lord did that thing. Uh -huh. right? right. Go ahead, man. It's like it. And all the cattle <laughs> of Egypt died, mm. but the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Con. You see that? All the cattle of Egypt died, but not the Israelites' cattle. Right? These are, this is how the Most High works, man. Only the Most High can do that. That's right. You see that? Go ahead. And Pharaoh said, and behold, there was none, not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it towards the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. Because that is a sign and significance of letting uh, of humility, right? We nothing but dust and ashes at the end of the day, right? All right, right. Right? The Most High is the one who blesses us with life. The Most High is the one who blesses us with breath and fresh air and things of that nature. He can take all that from us. Good health. He can take it from us just like just like that. Right. Right? And when he takes it from us, guess what, man? We back to dust and ashes, man. Right? Spirit back up in the third in the third heaven with dwelling with the most high God. And whatever he decides to do with us with our spirit is what he decides to do with it. Right. Go ahead. And it shall become small dust. In the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil port breaking forth and bales upon man and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Right. And so now you got this small dust, man. That that's going. He didn't. He didn't threw the dust in the air. Right now, and it caused like a, a, a damn disease, man. Right. Right. And, it, and it, it, it's like the damn. You know what they call? You gotta watch our words. You know what I'm saying? Gonna load this on YouTube, but. It's like the damn uh, King Kong disease now spread all over the place, man. right? Or the C-19, right? To the point that now everybody got boils, including the animals. Go ahead. And they took ashes in the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven and became, and became a boil breaking forth with blames upon men and upon beasts. Verse 11, and the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. And the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. Remember the uh, magicians, you know what I'm saying, these wicked witches, basically. You know what I'm saying? Everything that the Most High is doing, they're doubling it up on it. But now these boils are so bad, they didn't double up on that. Right? right? They said, oh, no, this is too much for me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Most high got me walking around here looking like Tom Cruise from Vanilla Sky, man. Right? So we're not going to double up on that. Right? Go ahead. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has spoken unto Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. God of Hebrews. God of what? God, God of Hebrews. Hebrews. Right? Don't ever forget that. Who the Most High God is a God of. Go ahead. Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayst know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Mm, mm, mm. Sounds, and, sounds like a very mean guy. Right. An austere guy, like the Bible tells him to be. Ah, Go uh, ahead. And in very deep, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power. And that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. The same way that he raised up Moses, you know what I'm saying, for the people of Israel is the same way that he raised up Christ for the people of Israel. That's right. The same way that he, you know what I'm saying, that he uh, uh, lifted up a serpent in the wilderness for the children of Israel, right, is the same way that Christ is being lifted up. So when you look at the Passover, it plays hand in hand when you're dealing with Christ and when you're dealing with, you know what I'm saying, our people coming out of captivity and slavery out of Egypt. They both have the same significant meaning, right? right? 
And these are things that we have to realize. Go ahead. As yet exhaust thou thyself against my people, thou that thou will not let them go. Mm -mm -mm. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them and they shall die. Bro, imagine Seattle hell, you know what I'm saying, for like a week straight. No, stop. We know it, and when it hells here, it hells. Right? Them little ice balls, man, be the size of damn Skittles, man. Right? Yeah. Imagine that, you know what I'm saying, but 10 times bigger. Coming down. The most high is not playing when it comes to his judgments. Right? Go ahead. I'll crush your head. I'll crush your head. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 20. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. The Lord said unto Moses, stretch forth thy hand towards heaven mm -hmm. that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven and the Lord sent thunder and hell and the fire ran along upon the ground and the Lord rained hell upon the land of Egypt. So there was hell and fire mingling with the hell. Mm. Very grievous, such as there was none like in it all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hell smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hell smoked every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Can you jump to verse 35, King? Verse 35. And the, <laughs> and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord has spoken by Moses. So even you see, it's a, it's a repeated fact of Pharaoh not wanting to let our people go. Right, this is why that we continue to keep doing the work as Israelites because we know that, you know what I'm saying, that these enemies are not going to let our people go. They're going to keep hitting our people with lies and deceit, right? Our people don't even want to be let go. They want to continue to be trapped in this captivity, man. But us as Israelites, man, we want to be free from this captivity. Right. This is why that we are actually doing this Passover, man, right? In memoration of Yahweh Shai, man. And in memorization of our mighty forefathers and foremothers, man, who paved the way for us to even have this opportunity to rehearse the righteous acts and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Because there were times that we weren't able to do that. I'm going to speak this up. The water came. Let me get, um, who's the next reader? Genesis chapter 10. Let me get you, King. Genesis chapter 10. Just bear with me. You know what I'm saying? You come up here, King. Genesis? Yeah, Genesis. Oh, I mean, I'm slocky. Exodus chapter 10. Slocky. Exodus chapter 10. All praise of the most high, man. Get this through before the candle go up. This is Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. Bring it out. And the Lord said unto Moses, go, in, go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and in the heart of his servants, that I might shew these, these are my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, and of thy son's son, what things have I wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know that, that ye may know how that I am in the Lord. Jump to verse 4. If, else, if thou refuse to let my people go, be, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts in thy, in thy coast. Now we're dealing with the plague of locusts, a threat of locusts, man. Has anybody dealt with locusts before? Anybody live down south, Midwest? A little bit. A little bit, right. There's no joke. They're no joke. They will bite. <laughs> they will sting, right? And they're and you will see them. You will see them flying at you, man. They're like damn dragonflies, man. Right? So now we're dealing with a plague of locusts. 
So the most high is not playing. Each play gets worse and worse and worse. Right? Uh, and that's how we're going to see Babylon the Great go down. That's right. You're going to have times and seasons where it's going to get worse and worse and worse. But when that happens, understand it's going to be worse and worse and worse for so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans with Jacob's trouble. Uh, right? And if you want to be saved out of it, man, then we got to keep these feast days. That's right. Right? We got to keep the holy days. We got to keep the commandments of God. Go ahead, King. And, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat eat the residue of of that which is is escaped. That, and there's so many locusts around that you can't even see the sky, right? Did anybody see that movie? Um, yeah, what's that movie, man? Uh, with the uh, white dude, man, he, Legion. That was crazy. Huh? Right. Anybody see that movie, Legion? You know what I'm saying? Where all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? Death and destruction is coming and the whole sky is covered. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right? That's what's going on dealing with these locusts. Go ahead. Which remaineth until you from the hell and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. Mm -hmm. And they shall fill the houses and the houses of all thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth until this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be snared unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that, that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto, unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. Jump to verse 15, it's lucky thing. Yes, sir. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened, and, and they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left, and and the, and there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and and Aaron in haste. And in he, haste, right? He's now like, you know what I'm saying, let's speed this up. Get them here ASAP Rocky. Go ahead. And he said, I have sinned against the Lord, your God, and against you. See, he only wants to acknowledge, you know what I'm saying, that he's actually, you know what I'm saying, done something wrong to us as Israelites or sinned against the Most High God. When stuff hits the fan, you know what I'm saying, it actually affects him, you know what I'm saying, his Egyptian, Egyptian empire. Go ahead. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God, that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts, and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust and all the coasts of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. But so the Lord what? Hardened yeah, Pharaoh's heart. heart. Uh-huh. So that he would go so he, so he would not let the children of Israel go. So he didn't let us go again. Right, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hold hand. On, hold on, real quick. Even darkness which may be what? Be felt. Elaborate on that, bro. <laughs> Even darkness, which may be felt. What you think that's talking about? Which darkness, which may be felt. It says, Even darkness, which may be felt. Right? It's talking about darkness over the land. Mm -hmm. Right? But also a darkness that you can actually feel. Yeah. Right? What happens? What happens? Remember when we was kids? What happens, you know what I'm saying, when, uh, your mother and your father turned off the lights in your room and closed the door. You feel spooky? You feel, yeah, you feel scared, man. Right? Kind of got your feet, you know what I'm saying? You don't want your feet kind of dangling over the bed because you kind of think somebody under the bed going to snatch your feet. You know what I'm saying? You kind of don't want the closet open because, you know what I'm saying, you don't even know what's going to come out of there because everything's dark. Right? It's saying that this is so dark that it's so spooky that nobody can see around. They don't know what's going on. Right? They don't know what's going on. You can't see nothing. You just standing there and somebody can just come right by you. Like flash, you know what I'm saying? And, and damn, you, 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 your neck's off. And your head's cut off. 
right? That that that's darkness that you can feel. Right. right? This is what the most high is talking about with that. Right, go ahead. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward the heaven, and and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose. They saw not one another. Three days. Right? Three days, everybody walking around looking like crunchy black, you know what I'm saying, with no lights on, man. Right? Can't see nothing. Everybody got all, all black. Probably black forces. Right? Dark as hell. Can you? I, I wouldn't even be able to see, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't even be able to see my brother. And we this close. That's dangerous. Go ahead. They saw not one another, neither rose from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed, and let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings. Thou must also give us what? Sacrifices and burnt offerings. Because these are part of our traditions, man. Right, go ahead. That we may sacrifice unto the unto the Lord our um, unto the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not in hoof be left behind, for thereof thereof must be take to to serve the Lord our God. We know not with that we must serve the Lord until we come come to, um come hither. Come to hither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. But the he, what? But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Again, go ahead. And he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get get thee from me. Take heed to thyself. See my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face. Thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. I will see thy face again no more. I'll praise him outside, man. All right, let's get the next reader up here for chapter 11. We're going to speed this up. We're not going to read the entire chapter. We're going to go through it because we're almost done. And we're going to get straight to this Passover meal. All right, the water for you guys' patience, you know what I'm saying? All right, but it's important that we understand the ordinances, you know what I'm saying, of this Passover. Right. Right? Oh. Thus said the Lord, because that's what's important. All right, start at Exodus chapter 12, start at verse 1, King. Uh, 11. Yeah, 11. Uh, 11, so lock you. This is looking at Exodus chapter 11 and verse 1. Read out loud. Out. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go. Hence, when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Verse 2. Speak now in the earth of in the, the In the people. ears, in the ears. Oh, slot here. In the ears of the people. And let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt and in the sight of Pharaoh. Right, see, the Most High can put you in positions even in the land of your captivity. You know what I'm saying? What's up? Oh, shit. Where did it come from? Fuck it. Don't worry about it. I got it. Don't worry about it.
no reverse. No foul. No foul. Of Pharaoh's servant. And in. Oh, because my camera was going to say something on this point. Of Pharaoh's servant. And in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. Verse 6, and there shall be a great cry throughout the land of Egypt. So now we got the worst, you know what I'm saying, plague that's coming upon these Egyptians. Right? All these plagues that the Most High and put upon them for not letting our people go, man. Now the Most High is really about to, you know what I'm saying, get to the nitty gritty. To where all the firstborn, you know what I'm saying, are to die. Right? This death angel. Right? Now we're getting into, you know what I'm saying, the heart, you know what I'm saying, and the, uh, uh, the foundation of this Passover. Go ahead. Egypt, such as there, was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. Verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. So not a what? Shall not a dog move his tongue. So not what? Shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man or beast, that ye may know how the Lord do it put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Right, there's a difference between the Egyptians and Israelites, man. You know, Egyptians, they got big, you know what I'm saying, damn, you know, Bebop and Rocksteady, rhinoceros foreheads. Right? Beady eyes. You know what I'm saying? Right. That Cushite eyes. You know what I'm saying? Right? They kind of take bones and kind of put them in their noses. You know what I'm saying? Right? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? They kind of take those big, you know what I'm saying, lifesavers and kind of like put them in their ears. Ear way down here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Eat boo boo. Drink piss. Right. You know what I'm saying? Run around the damn all of Africa butt naked like movie The Gods Must Be Crazy. Right? We're not we're not Egyptians, man. Right? We're Israelites. That's right. Right? We're the salt of the earth, man. That's it. Right? We built all these treasure cities for Pharaoh, man. Right? We're the ones that need to be saved up out of captivity. That's right. Right? That's what true salvation is truly about. Salaki King, go ahead. Verse 8. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me. And bow down, bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee. And after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in the great anger. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multitude in the land of Egypt. Right, multiplied in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Multiplied in the land of Egypt, Salakia. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders mm -hmm. before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. What did the Lord do? And the, the Lord, Lord hardened, hardened Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's heart. heart. Go ahead. So, so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. You see that? Everybody keeps right. Going, it's, it, keeps, it keeps on going. It's the same thing. Right? So, Water King, let's get the uh, next reader, man. Last reader. <laughs> chapter 12. We're not going to go through the whole chapter. We're going to go through the key parts of this, man. Okay. Right? Because now we want to get to the nitty gritty of this. All praise the most high, man. Right. right? This is a beautiful thing, man. Right? We're not going to let the so called police officer come over here. And he was he was cool. But we're not going to let, you know what I'm saying, somebody who's upstairs, you know what I'm saying, ruin what we got going on, man. Right? 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 Even the so-called white man said, I approached, I can tell you don't say what nothing going on. He said, we look quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, King. Salak you. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. No, it shall be them, you know what I'm saying, January, and that's the first month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Right, so understand the season that we're in right now is the first month. You understand that? It makes sense. The flowers are growing, everything's growing, you know what I'm saying? Why would the first month be when everything is dead? Everything's cold, right? Go ahead. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take... Of 
to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Right. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Right. So the most high even back then was not playing, you know what I'm saying, when it came down to his, you know what I'm saying, his ordinances. Right. You couldn't sit there and make excuses and be like, well, I, oh Lord, I can't fit a lamb. We got a small shack. Right. Most I say, well, your neighbor, you know what I'm saying, got a lamb. Go holla at him. Right. Right. Well, Lord, you know, I, I'm, I don't have all the money. Well, your brothers over there, they hosting Passover, you know what I'm saying? Go get with them. Right. Right? There's no excuses, man. Right? Right. right? You either want to serve the Lord or you don't. Right. right? Go ahead. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your account for the lamb. Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it. Up unto the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Right, we're getting into the ordinances, you know what I'm saying, on how you actually prepare for Passover. Right now, we can only do the best that we can, being that we're in captivity. Right, right I'm gonna let y'all know right now, you know what I'm saying. I, I was not able to find Esau's one of Esau's farm and steal the lamb, right, and, and slaughter it. If I did, I wouldn't be here. Or be locked up for animal animal cruelty. Go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Because that blood represented the fact that, you know what I'm saying, that they serve Yahweh by seeing Yahweh shot. That's right. Right? So when this death angel that's getting ready to come in, right, to swoop on all the firstborn children, you know what I'm saying, if you did not follow the ordinances of God, you know what I'm saying, you didn't have that blood on that door post, then guess what? You will lose your child. Go ahead. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. Right. This is what we're doing tonight. Go ahead. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it No, raw. no, no. With collard greens, they shall eat it. With bitter yeah. herbs, they shall eat it. All right, man. Right? Ain't nobody trying to have Passover with damn collard greens, man. Yeah. Right? Damn ham hocks, man. Right? Talk about, ooh, these are bitter herbs. All right, go ahead. Eat none of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the puritanness thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Ye shall burn with fire. Right? So... We barely have some leftovers, right? If anybody gets hungry, you know what I'm saying, and wants some more lamb, we have a little bit of leftovers. If there's anything that's left on that plate over there, we're going to be burning it with fire, yeah. right? That'll be the time that the neighbor will probably want to call the cops, right? <laughs> because we got to do exactly what the Most High says, uh -huh. man. Thus said the Lord, man, because that's, a, that's, an, that's, like, that's a burnt offering up to the Most High God. He loves that sweet, savory smell of lamb, Right? Let's jump ahead a little bit, man, and speed this up. You know what I'm saying? I see people got them sleep eyes. All right, let's uh, <laughs> go to um, jump. Uh, you want to Can you stop? Uh, start at verse uh, 20, 23, please. God, verse 23. Matter of fact, start at verse uh, 15. Verse 15. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away... Leaven out of your houses. So when you go back home, you know what I'm saying, make sure that you put out all leaven out of your houses. Right? Anything that has leaven in it. Right? Bread. Uh, hell. What else? Yeast. 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 Right. You know what I'm saying? This will be the week, you know what I'm saying, to kind of just be... Beer. All right, right. Beer. Right? See that? That's horrible for me. See that? <laughs> Let the water out. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know. Let me know when you find it. <laughs> Let me know when you find it. Right? This will be a great week, you know what I'm saying? The kind of just, you know what I'm saying, be on your, what the white man would call the Cinco de Mayo. Just eat, you know what I'm saying, flour tortillas all damn week. That's it. Right? That's Substitute everything with flour tortillas, man. But I don't know, we, I know me and Miles, we eating tacos all week. Right? Kind of. See that? All praise. Right? Go ahead, King. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Mm -hmm. For whosoever eat leaven bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off. Right, and see, and, and that's the beauty of Christ. Ah. That's where grace comes in. 
But don't sit there and take advantage of grace. Grace is just a time period for us to get ourselves together. Right. The moment you keep taking advantage of that grace, man, you're going to be what? Uh, you want to say you're going to be what? Shall be cut off from Israel. Straight up. That's where you get Romans chapter 9, verse 7. Not all of Israel is real. All right, go ahead. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation. In the seventh day, right? Seventh day, there should be a holy convocation. Now, I know we're in captivity. But Lord willing, you know what I'm saying, we'll be able to get together, you know what I'm saying, on that seventh day as well. Okay. Right? Because that's what we're instructed to do. The Lord likes us to party, man. That's it. Right? Oh, no, I mean, you got to understand, he's well-rounded. Uh, right? Like oh, you see that? <laughs> All right? All right, man. Hey, we got to be uptight in this truth all the time, man. Huh? All right? You don't want to be that brother, you know what I'm saying, the damn feast day in the damn corner, you know what I'm saying, me mugging everybody. Man, I don't want to be around that brother on the feast day. I don't want to get crunk, man. All right? Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Come on, jump to verse, um, let's go to verse, uh, go to verse 24. Verse 24, and ye shall observe this thing for the ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Keep going. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which Yahweh will give you. Right, a land that we're actually looking to get back to, man, which is the Holy Land. Come. Uh, Go ahead. According as he had promised. Because he promised us that thing, man. All right? Go ahead. That ye shall keep this servant. So understand when people say that we're not going to be keeping, you know what I'm saying, laws, we're not going to be doing sacrifices in the kingdom. Right? This is this whole chapter is a cut. God. Right? These same ordinances that we're keeping right now, we're going to be keeping in the kingdom. That's right. Right? That's the whole purpose of that new covenant being established, that the laws is actually written in our inward hearts. That we won't have to teach every man his neighbor, saying that no more, because every man is going to know who Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai is. Right. Right? Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? That ye shall say... It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover. It is what? It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover. No, it is the sacrifice of damn Easter egg Easter. It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover. Go ahead. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he spoke the Egyptians. When he what? When he spoke the Egyptians. And don't we give, we give all praise, honor, and glory to the most high. Yeah. Right? Love you. How about you That's son? right, man. Come on. Right? All the so-called white man's holidays is all about, you know what I'm saying, the death and destruction of our people. God. Right? When you look into the, our heritage and you look into these holy days, man, every single holy day is about the death and destruction of our enemies. That's right. Right? Or deliverance, man, from our enemies. Right? That's right. right? And that's what we celebrate. Go ahead. And delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshiped. And the children of Israel went away. And did as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight, Yahweh smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. What did the Lord do? The Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. God, go ahead. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Right, nobody's, nobody's safe. Nobody. Not Manute Bull, not Bull Bull, right? All them, right? Go ahead. And right, even animals. God. That's right. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great sick cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. There was a great cry in Egypt. We waiting for the day where every man is going to be uh, crying like a woman in travail, man. Right. Okay. Go ahead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, and get you forth from among my people. Both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve Yahweh as ye have said. Also, take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent up upon the people. Jump to verse 35. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians 
jewels of silver. Right, give me back my bling, man. Go ahead. And jewels of gold. Right, give me back my gold, man. Right, we the real leprechauns. Go ahead. And raiment. And raiment, right? Give me, you know what I'm saying, all my stuff, my clothes, everything. My trip. Right, exactly. Go ahead. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them in flocks and herds, even very much cattle. Right, you can jump to verse... Um... So like here. Uh, give me Exodus chapter 13 and start at verse 3. God, this is the book of Exodus chapter 13 verse 3. Bring it out. And Moses said unto the people, remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, Yahweh brought you out from this place. There shall no living bread be eaten. This day Came ye out in the month of Bib? No, in the in the month of damn January. In the month of Bib. That is springtime for for those right. who don't know, right? This is why that we keep these ordinances around this time because the Most High tells us to, right? Now let's get the last one, man. Give me Matthew chapter twenty six. So you got a question, King? Yeah, right here when it says, uh, and I know I wasn't trying to. Uh, oh, you good, stop, King? Stop the most, and it says uh, verse verse eight. Can you read that? Yeah, read that again, King. Uh, verse 8 through 10. Uh, Exodus chapter 13, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it shall be, uh, uh, so like it, and thou shalt show thy son in the in that day, saying, This is done because of that which Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath Yahweh brought thee out of Egypt. Mm. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. From year to year. That's, real, that's right. That's a, that's a good one. Right? That's a good point. Right? So we got to keep this Passover from year to year. Whatever years that the Most High gives us, we got to keep the Passover, man. Right. right? This is a very, very important holy day. Right? This is a holy day of self-examination, being thankful, being humble, man. Right? And understanding what we're in this thing for. Right, so what? Right, so you mentioned the darkness. Yeah. The darkness that we feel. We just tell huh, them. Bring it out. This is the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, from the top. Bring it out. Oh, yeah, how would Your acts of judgment are marvelous. And hard to explain. That is why people who had not been taught about them went astray. When lawless people imagine that they had your holy nation in their power, mm -hmm. they were themselves in prison in a long night of darkness. Mm. They lay in their own houses, shut off from your eternal care. Mm. They that? thought that their sins had been secret and unnoticed, mm, mm, mm. shielded from view by a dark curtain of forgetfulness. But now they were horribly afraid, confused, and terrified by ghostly forms. Uh, mm. See that? That's scary. You see that? Yeah. Right? The most high has spirits on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Isaiah 45 and 7. He's the creator of light and darkness. Right, it's something we gotta realize, man. Exactly, exactly, man. So we gotta take these things serious. Let's jump to Matthew chapter twenty-six. Okay. Let's wrap this. So um, before we jump to this chapter, um, has everybody got? Um, um where Savante, where's your spot at, bro? Where your where's your, where's your spot? Where your plate? Oh, okay, con, con. All right, so let me get um. I have you sitting next to your uh, oh shit. I have you sitting next to your wife. <laughs> so I have you right there with a plate there. Right? Um let me let's get this young brother a plate, you know what I'm saying? And then we'll um and then we'll get started. We'll get started. So everybody go ahead. Um there should be lamb.
Right, there should be lemon, uh, unleavened bread. So lock it, y'all. This is my first time making unleavened bread. I hope it's good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lord willing. But if everybody just go ahead and start serving, start making your guys' plates. You know what I'm saying? It's not like one of those meals where, you know what I'm saying, it's just, you know, five star. Yeah. Are you wanting to partake in this cheetah? No, brother. Are you want to partake in this? Man, Mark said, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, Matthew 15, man. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Dirt, don't go follow, man. With that being said, call Allah, y'all about Shalom, my Shalom, coming like y'all were shy. WFI, SOI, resurrected, man. Passover, man. First annual Passover. Shalom, Shalom. 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 Shalom.